Have you ever experienced a social norm which has made you feel small, insignificant, worthless, and anything less than what you truly are? This is 85 to 90 percentage of human population. Social norm is a shared standard of acceptable behavior. It tells us what is acceptable and what is not an acceptable behavior in a society. It can create good order in society. But what happens when these social norms are internalized and they become belief and are passed on from generation to generation, they create social injustice and those that I'm talking about are of caste, creed, color, religion and that of gender. Let me give you a small example of gender belief. It is a belief that women are meant for caretakers role. This same belief perpetuates indifferent and unequal treatment of women in our society. Let me share with you a small story. It was summer of 1990s, much awaited time of the year, summer holidays for us. I still remember that year and that day in all its vivid details us boarding the first class compartment of the Indian Railways, my beloved parents and us four siblings looking forward to our stay in our village, in our native land, us enjoying the savouries prepared by my mother, us playing and fighting all along and upon reaching our native land, that bearing unbearable dry heat of the north, warm and welcoming gestures of our relatives and friends, sweetness of jaggery, the soothing and calming effect that the water had on us, which was taken from the village well, us mingling with the village friends and playing in our mango orchard, the shade of the mango orchard, which was such a respite for that dry and sultry place, us devouring the famous locally grown mango variety, which is called as Dasehari, indulging in local cuisine like Nimona, Bakir, so on and so forth. For me, as a little girl, life was fun. Until one day, I saw my parents not in their usual demeanor. They were sad, confused, and angry. I loved my parents, and I went to them and I asked them, Mommy, Papa, kya hua bataye? Tell me what happened. I wanted to do something right there and then to bring back their smiles. But they wouldn't speak. A few hours later, they revealed something which was going to change the whole course of our life as a family. My father was the youngest of three siblings and he always helped his family. Why would he be singled out? Why would he be ill-treated? My parents disclosed to me that my uncle had refused to share our ancestral home with my parents. It was devastating because a house is the basic need. We didn't have a house. And what was more painful was that the relatives who we considered our own, 
were acting like strangers. Now, even more appall appalling was the reason why it was being done, why my parents were being ostracized in that community. It was because they didn't have a boy child, a boy to carry ahead the legacy of the family, the name of the family ahead. So all this apart, I was going through spectrum of emotions. At one spectrum, one end of the spectrum, I was feeling frustration, anger, dejection, confusion, betrayal, and on the other end of spectrum was a girl who did not want the society to determine her faith. A girl who did not want to believe what the society believed, that as a girl, she was worthless. And I made a promise to myself. As a family, now we had two options. And as you all know, then we did not have uh, this constitution wherein girls could inherit paternal property. Now, thankfully, things have changed and girls can inherit pa paternal property. As a family, we had two options. Like I said, number one was to fight for our ancestral rights, our share. And two was to fight for our significance, to fight for a life wherein we become the masters of our destiny, to fight so that we can be, have, we can be, do, and have everything that we ever desired as human beings. And we chose the second option as a family and as girls, all four of, four of us. Now, we packed our bags and went home where my father was working. Thankfully, this incident made me value education more than I used to. I started participating in extracurricular activities in school and college. I was part of youth parliament and I bagged prizes. I was part of NCC for five years, represented my directorate, got C certificate. I was elected as student council president of my co college and led a batch of approximately 2,000 women. I never bunked my school or college. I never let a single minute pass without knowing or learning anything new. And 10 years from that particular incident in my village, something very remarkable happened in my life. In the year 2005, I found myself in the Indian Naval Academy, Asia's biggest academy and part of fourth most largest and powerful militaries of the world. I was getting the same training at par with my male counterparts. I was marching shoulder to shoulder with men. I passed out from the academy and I assumed my duty as an air traffic control officer of one of the most professional branches of the armed forces, that is Indian Naval Aviation Branch. And therein, sometimes I led men who were twice my age. Our life changed, my life changed. Back home, people who had isolated my parents, who disregarded them, were now respecting them. Now they knew what could happen if they value their daughters. Education became a priority in that village. The literacy rate improved. 
I became the first woman from my village to have joined the armed forces. First woman from my district to have joined Indian Navy. Five years down the line, my sister too joined. Now, who could mess up with my parents? I got back those smiles on my parents' faces. Also, one of the dream come moment for me was when my commissioning certificate was signed by one of my favorite icons during my college time, and that was late President APJ Abdul Kalam. <laughs> Incidentally, I studied in a college, College for Women, Holy Cross College for Women, which was close to a college called as St. Joseph's College, where once President APJ Abdul Kalam pursued his uh, graduation in physics, and I was doing physics too. I always felt proud and always felt inspired by this great icon. Now, 12 years happened and I wanted to continue in the Navy, but the policies were not very favorable for continuation of women in long service. I had to, I had to retire and join my husband who was deputed abroad and uh, in the service of the motherland with my two kids, the younger one was still a few months old. I loved playing the role of mother and a supporting wife. But a few months into it, and I realized this is not going to be my life forever. And so I actually made a bucket list for myself in three categories of life, growth, experiences, and contribution. I went around and explored the world, went around a few countries with my family, with my children, and that bagged my infant son a record of being the youngest or the most traveled infant of India. Not only that, I started my journey as a coach. While I was abroad, I started teaching self-development lesson to young boys and girls of that country and came back, participated in a few pageant, national and international, went to Greece and competed amongst 150 women of all Indian origin from across the world and backed for myself a title called as Mrs. India Worldwide Pride of Nation 2019. <laughs> While I was doing all this, I was uncovering various dimensions of my personality. I was growing and I was expanding. I was changing. I was leaving behind the old self. So this was my life. And then I founded my company, wanted to take ahead. Coaching so far have impacted 10,000 men and women. And as if the challenge was not enough, I took a plunge into another business, another business which is altogether a different thing for me, where, where I had none in my family doing it, in the food business, and I'm loving the challenge. So from my experiences, what I can tell you is that I have worked in profession where it was actually dominated by men. It belonged to men. They, it was all men's world. And I realized that men who come from a community or society which is deeply rooted in patriarchal norms or beliefs were the ones who found it difficult to take women in authority figures. They found it difficult to see opinionated women and women who were self-reliant, financially independent, and someone who could generally take care of themselves. That has to change in our society. Because if we as a nation want to progress, one half of our population, which is women, they have to get equal opportunities. 
and it will not be possible without without uh, support of the government so if i have to give you three points as a takeaway it would be one change identify the rules which are blocking you because i am sure none of you want to become uh, carbon copies of your grandparents and grandmothers number 2 your growth and expansion is prerequisite to your contribution number 3 is that your growth will depend upon your agility to change to adapt to new ways of being and of doing things even our scriptures support change parivartanam sthiram asti change is the only constant and i'm also reminded of charles darwin who said that it is not the strongest who survives not the most intelligent it is the one who is most adaptable to change and therefore if you have to have a life wherein you can achieve anything you got to identify and change and as human beings like darwin said survival is not the only question in fact survival is not a question because we are in the apex of the food chain as the most intelligent species the question the real question is how are we going to contribute in this world what is our purpose going to be and therein lies the secret of our growth and therein lies the secret of our joy and fulfillment and that gives you the legacy of your life this is lieutenant commander dr sadhna giri i alone cannot change the entire world but what i can do is cast a little stone in the waters of society which can create ripples of change jai hind